the next concept of networking that is called network function virtualization and software defined network so sdn is actually dissociating your as i said you are moving towards virtualization so it is dissociating your the control plane that is the forwarding process and routing process so you just dissociate your user part and the control part and you put it into a software rather than the logic on the hardware and network function virtualization is that you define your uh, various concepts of networking in form of software based architecture so you have like uh, a service being provided in form of like routing or in form of switching so you have two concepts that is nfp and sdn now next is network functions virtualization which is done to virtualize entire classes of network node functions so now the key concept here is that when you dissociate your software you can have the complete network in you can say one logic so you don't need to execute it on each node rather than the software is different uh, here so you just need an orchestration engine to apply all the logics in one go so it is highly automated and highly advanced in form of compared to the traditional networks so let's see what would happen to the network when we apply nfp and sdn we would have a 5g core which is virtualized or containerized depending upon the type of application that you are using so probably we can build the complete core in one pc as well and if required we can you know just scale it put it in cloud that is either on a public cloud aws or google cloud platform or we can put it into a private cloud like open stack then we have the virtualized black uh, sorry backhaul so the virtualized backhaul is actually you have applied the concept of nfp and sdn the hardware is different and the software layer is different so you can automate uh, the all the functionalities you can segregate the transport network as well so you will be having a different transport network for one slice that is for embb you have a different transport network for urlcc and you have a different transport network for the uh the other part of a network so also you can sell it to the enterprises as well so support they require a private network you can just segregate a network slice and you can uh, sell it to the private networks as well so and the radio is provided by the the new radio so this is the complete high level view of 5g network now let's talk about the architecture on the new radio we have 5g core which is virtualized so we know we can segregate the 5g core we can have a different core for uh, you can say different type of services so because it's on based on software we can have multiple apply, uh, you can say multiple instances as well we have virtualized backhaul as well so we can segregate the backhaul uh, required to according to our requirement as well and then we have a new radio but we didn't talk about how we can you know split this radio for our convenience of uh you can say or for our requirement requirement of network slices so this is provided by another concept called ran functional split so in a site or in a mobile tower you have basically the three uh, you can say functionalities so the first functionality it will take the incoming data packet that is on the ip ip layer it will process them and it will basically radiate it over the antenna so the radiation part is basically taken this is a passive device so it, it, there is no logic in the antenna the logic is based on the remote radio head or the radio unit so this uh, the in which band it has to transmit and what is the frequency uh, it is using so all the logic is uh, being you can say for the transmission and reception purpose the logic is being uh, you can say deployed in the remote radio head we have a connection called cpri that is the common public radio interface which connects the remote radio head and the baseband so baseband is the the node which you can say does the digital processing of the packets and uh, sends it to the remote radio head so what we are going to do we are going to split or you can say define the service based architecture we are going to split the radio unit we have a digital unit and we have a control unit so we can use the containerization or virtualization and we can have one hardware here okay 
and one hardware can have all the three functionalities or we can have multiple hardware for one, one functionality. So first of all, let us understand what is the architecture option in case of no split. In case of no split, this is a kind of small cell. So this you can put in uh, area where you require a small, uh, you can say trans, uh, you can say the reception area. Like think of it as your router, right? You plug it to your fiber network, right? And then it just radiates you the Wi-Fi signal. So in this case, what will happen? You have the functionality of RU, DU, and CU. That is a radio unit, digital unit, and control unit into a, in just one box. And it will be connected to an antenna and it will transmit the 5G signals. So this is a kind of no split option, which can be used in small cells. So you can deploy it in uh, maybe a confined area where you require a very uh, low range of, uh, you can say reception, and you can deploy it in a multiple numbers. Then let's see what is the other option when we do the one split. So one split means that you have radio unit near the antenna, all right? And then it is connected to the digital unit and the control unit. So what we can do, suppose, uh, let us talk about a, a area of stadium. You, we have a cricket match going on, right? So there are a lot of antennas that we need to deploy to cover that the huge crowd that we have. And for that, what we will do, we will deploy the radio unit as close to antenna as possible. And then using the front hall, that, that is the fiber, we will connect it to a centralized location of uh, the base bands where we will be having multiple base bands that will process all the, you can say, uh, processing of digital unit and control unit in one place. And it will be connected to a high, uh, you can say, throughput fiber network. So this is a, another architecture option called one split, where you have RU, you have split here, and the other option is DU and CU is combined into one unit. Now next is when we have two splits. So this architecture option is you have, uh, you know, splitted the front hall into two parts. Here we have like, you can take an example of uh, street, street macro units. We can connect all the 5G antennas into street units, like uh, the street poles that we have. And we can aggregate them to a central location. For example, in a, uh, in a village, you can have all the antennas connected and all the connection of the F2 front hall comes to a central place. And then the front hall, the fiber travels to uh, the CU, that is the control unit that can be located into a different unit. So we have this option is called two splits where we have segregated radio unit, segregated digital unit and segregated control unit. The key part to, you can say, understand here is the control unit should be as close to transport network and the radio unit should be as close to the antenna. So this is the important aspect. All right. So as I, as I was saying, this is called a concept called network slicing, where we are segregating a physical network into logical networks. And it is a enabler of services and it's not a service. So means it will help you enable multiple services. So let's see. Uh, the 3GPP has defined the following uh, slice value. This is a service slice type value. And uh, these one are fixed. So at least what will happen, the 5G networks will have at least three slices. And this one is optional. That is V2X, which is called vehicle to everything. So EMBB would be one. URLLC, that is two. This is ultra reliable, low latency communication. And massive... IoT is three. So now for selection of this service, I mean, how would the network know which user equipment is going to which slice? So for that, we require another functionality called NSSF, Network Slice Selection Function. So we had we add this to the 5G based core. And these are the interfaces. So it will connect to the AMF. AMF means uh, AMF will help uh, UE connect to the proper slice. So after this, you will see this is the final version of the 5G core. We have NSSF, that is Network Slice Selection Function. 
we have authentication server function that is AUSF here. And this is called a service bus architecture, means everything is connected to a bus. And these are the functionalities, or you can say the service, service endpoints that we have. So this is the complete uh, service-based architecture. So you will see that we have network NEF, that is network exposure function. So this will help. This is kind of a menu of this network. This means that when this 5G code is connected to the another 5G code, this will tell you what services are being provided by the which, which node, all right? Using the network repository function. So this is exposed to the other network and network repository function helps to document what services is provided by the which node. So these are the complete functionality. Now in 5G core, we talk about only functionality, not the nodes. However, in 4G core, we used to talk about the nodes. So these are the complete functionality. We have the authentication server function, access and mobility management function, that is AMF, the data network. So data network is me, this means that it is connected to the other third party services or internet or any application function, anything. The network exposure function, NEF, which helps you to connect to the other networks. The network repository function, this contains kind of a menu for each, uh, you can say, uh, functionality. Network slice specific authentication and authorization function. So this is NSS AF and NSSF. So these two work in tandem with each other. So next is user plane function. As I said, user plane function is near to RAN here. And you would see R is in brackets. So we can have a radio access network or only an access network, or we can have a wired access network as well. Then we have a user equipment and the uh, application function, which is the, the list of applications that we can have. So let's see what are the scenarios of implementation. As I said, we, can, we have a 5G core here. We have the access layer that is a new radio here. And we have an aggregation layer. So aggregation, you can think of a router in between. However, aggregation layer contains a lot of routers and switches that you can say are intermediate and then that helps you to connect the access layer and the core layer. So this is a, you can say high level diagram and you can see we can have for redundancy, we can have two cores, right? Core one and core two. And access layer, we have the following functionality, radio unit, digital unit and control unit. So first is Cloud RAN. What will happen? We can put the control unit in the just near the core. So this is possible and highly useful. And when we can have a digital unit at the aggregation layer, and we can have only the radio unit near the antennas. So this is an example implementation of Cloud RAN. Second is mobile edge cloud. Now, what what is the challenge here? Challenge is that you, if you are supposed you are browsing internet, right? The packet will travel from here to aggregation layer and towards the UPF that is in the core. Now, what we need to do, we just need to reduce the latency. So what we can do, we can just move the UPF and we can put either in the aggregation layer and in the access layer. So suppose you have the access layer, you can put the user plane function here. Once you are, authenticated, you have the slice is being allocated to you, your session is created, your packet, the user plane packet will just go here and you can have a data network either here or just you can say at the edge. So this is an implementation of mobile edge cloud. So you will be hearing a lot of mobile edge cloud or edge in the near future, which is essential for any low latency application. Next, next is how the deployment of 5G will happen. So we can deploy to our private cloud using OpenStack or proprietary cloud solutions that is from VMware or other vendors. Then you have OpenStack, which is which you can use ORAN, that is a ORAN Alliance, which, which works on uh, opening the RAN interfaces. You can use Kubernetes and Docker, Docker as a container and Kubernetes as a uh, orchestration engine, engine for containers. You can also deploy 5G on public cloud, which is a use case for enterprises. Like you have a factory, right? You have a, uh, you need to automate your uh, 
appliances in the factory, you can just use AWS or uh, uh, you can say Azure to deploy the cloud over there. And you can deploy the RAN CU functionality over the cloud as well. And you can automate your uh, equipments using the 5G. Or you can also use the hybrid cloud deployment where you can use some as a private cloud, some functionality on private cloud and some functionality on public cloud. Like you can split the UDM and put the unified uh, data management layer into the public cloud. And you can you know, use it for, you can say authentication and all on, and the rest of the deployment of your 5G core is in your private uh, deployment. Now let's talk about V2X and we'll see a case study. Uh, it's a very high level case study. So this is the future, you know, self-driving or automated driving cars. Apple bought drive.ai for the Titan project and it's partner with Volkswagen and Google is working on Waymo. Now you might be seeing a lot of recapture images these days where you have to identify like, traffic lights or street signs, something like this. So that is actually to train the model for that automated driving project. Tesla is already working with autopilot and it's continuously improving it. So automated driving is future and 5G networks is going to play a huge role in this. So let's understand what is connected vehicle to everything. Let's understand this scenario. We have this, you can say road in infrastructure here. You have some traffic lights. You can have traffic lights, you can have anything which is helping to uh, like traffic cameras that identify the speed of moving vehicles or traffic lights that uh, you can say manage the traffic at a junction. You can connect it to the 5G network. And this connection is called infrastructure to network. Now, what will happen using AI, this will monitor the traffic on the road and it will work accordingly. So you can synchronize these traffic lights with each other. So suppose the traffic is green here and correspondingly it, it knows after what time it, this, and uh, this can help you help the vehicle understand what is the traffic scenario ahead. Then you have another connection for person to networks, which is for pedestrians. It works in a similar way as you are connected to your mobile phone. However, you might be having a smart band or you can say the smart watch, which can notify you what is the status of the traffic condition. Next is, which is, now this is possible in 4G networks as well, but what is next is we have a connection called vehicle to vehicle. So this can work on LiDAR or computer vision, but to have this work efficiently, uh, is my voice audible? Yes, Mohit, you are audible. Okay. So to have this link uh, work efficiently, we should have a low latency. And this is only possible in 5G network because this vehicle to vehicle connection or vehicle to infrastructure connection or person to vehicle connection, this is very much latency aware, means you, sh you cannot have high latency in this case. So these links are only possible when you have a low latency network. When you, you, you have a network which has a sub millimeter or you can say sub millisecond latency. So this is the use case of uh, vehicle to X or that is vehicle to everything connected. And it is only possible in 5G networks. And these are being tested right now in many parts of the world. And we are going to have, uh, you can say soon, uh, I think level two or level three type of automated vehicles in the 5G networks. So let's talk about the career path and job opportunities. If you go to Google Trends and you search for the 5G and 4G and do a comparison study, you would see there is a huge, you can say, increase in the 5G uh, trend and uh, decrease in the 4G trend. And this is spike. This was last year at the time of Corona when there, there was a, you can say, a hype that uh, 5G is bringing Corona and something like this. However, this is just, uh, I can say, a false claim. So, okay, so these are the high level view of various type of jobs that you can have as a, during the 5G networks. If we talk about from the access network, we have RF planning engineer and optimization engineer. 
So these are also in 4G networks, but in 5G, the scope would be very high because the deployment would be very dense. On the mobile part, we have mobile developer and mobile tester. 5G will bring another category of, you can say devices that would be IoT. So you would be having IoT developer, deployment engineer. Then for that, you will be having operation and maintenance, then DevOps. DevOps is actually for IoT as well, where you have to you know deploy updates on massive devices. Then there is agency support. Suppose you are going to support critical uh, applications, just like or sooner or later, uh, the military or the police would be have using these 5G networks. And then you have to support those agencies as well. So this is agency support. We have the RAN engineer here, which helps in deployment of the uh, radio access equipment. We have the virtualized backhaul. So you require a trans transport and IP engineer. Then operation and maintenance engineer, which who takes care of all the, uh, you can say, operation of the network. For the core side, you have either IT engineer or core engineer. Now these are actually merging together because this is a software based uh, deployment and these three fields, DevOps, data scientist, and SecOps, these are the important concepts and these uh, fields would be applied to all the, you can say, uh, parts of the network. So these are the high level view of the job opportunities related to 5G.